Good morning, everyone. My name is Maria Enriquez, and I'm the Marketing and Community Relations Director for Amerigroup Georgia. Thank you for joining our Amerigroup session for the Spring Medicaid Fair. We're excited to discuss some important topics with you today, including our member engagement, some innovative programs to remove barriers to access, our members' incentives, and of course, our provider engagement and our provider incentives. Please feel free to utilize the, the chat feature to ask questions. And at the end of the presentation, you'll be also able to ask questions. You can raise your hand and we will unmute you, but please wait until the end of the presentation. I do wanna add that this deck and the PowerPoint has been uploaded to the GAMIS website and you can find that under the provider information tab under provider notices. Amerigroup is proud to serve the Georgia family members for 17 years and the Georgia Families 360 members since 2014. We currently serve over 630,000 members and we're focused on helping them achieve healthy and wellness lifestyle while engaging with them to better understand their needs. Next, let's take a moment to watch a video with a member testimonial for one of our current programs with Mom's Meals. This program is designed for expecting members with diabetes or gestational diabetes, and we provide 140 meals tailored to their needs. I hope you enjoy the video. We are working on fixing our technical difficulties and we'll share the video in one moment. Women can face many challenges during their pregnancy and are at risk for various physical and mental health complications. Proper nutrition is vital for a healthy pregnancy. However, women diagnosed with diabetes during pregnancy may have issues managing food intake and controlling glucose levels, creating a greater risk for pregnancy complications, such as preterm delivery and also cesarean sections. As an OB nurse case manager, my role is to identify the individual needs of the member as it relates to their physical, mental, and social determinants of health and provide them with the education and resources to promote a healthy pregnancy and a healthy birth outcome. One such resource I refer diabetic pregnant members to is Mom's Meals. Mom's Meals is a nutrition program tailored to ensure pregnant women receive the nutrition they need in order to support their own health, as well as the health of their baby. I was diabetic before my pregnancy. So it was, you know, with being diabetic, it's hard to do meal preps and stuff, especially I'm the only one in my family that's diabetic. And so my family goes into a whole different diet plan than I do. So cooking two meals is really hard, especially being pregnant. So with mom's meals, it's helped me to just keep my weight stabilized. Healthy weight 
goals and keep my blood sugar under control. It's really easy, really. Um, with my insurance with Georgia Medicaid, I just went through my caseworker and my caseworker told me about it. And it's like, because I was pregnant before and I never heard of mom's meals until the second pregnancy. Apparently it's like a really new thing that I found out. Um, so she signed me up in less than a week. They called me say, hey, your first box is coming. I'm like, it, it was really simple, really. The member will receive two diabetic meals daily or 14 uh, meals weekly that are delivered to the member's home, which are wonderful because these meals are pre-prepared and they only take a few minutes to heat up and they can last in the refrigerator up to 14 days. Members are also given the option to choose which meals they like and they will receive a total of 140 meals through their pregnancy. It is easy, it's simple. I, I find it less time consuming and to make sure I'm eating the right things. For my for myself and my baby, keeping my blood sugar that blood sugar under control, and and also because I am overweight, it's helping me control my weight. I, I say, give it a go. I mean, I, I think it's been really beneficial to me. I think it'd be beneficial for other women too. Thank you for your patience and thank you for the opportunity to share this example of our member testimonial and how we're working together with our community partners, providers, and members to make a difference in their life. If you want more information about the Mom's Meals program, please let us know in the chat and we'll definitely share with you. One second while we pull up our presentation again. Thank you, everyone. Here we go. Thank you. Now we're going to go over some innovative programs that we have to remove barriers uh, through community partnerships and uh, member engagement. Uh, the first one is our doula program. We're excited to partner with the doula network to provide a scholarships to 20 doulas, doulas in the community to get certified. We'll be having a training on April 28th to the 30th in Valdosta, Georgia, where 20 doulas will be certified to serve a uh, part of the rural community. And we will also provide doulas for over 250 members in the future. Uh, we're excited since the doula services is important to reduce health disparities, increase access to doula services, and just improve maternal and infant outcomes in general. Our VRI program, we have partnered for a remote chronic condition monitor program. This is specifically for members with hypertension and it helps the member manage, better manage their health. It will reduce emergency visits and hospital stays and improve the overall outcomes of our members. We currently have 539 members active in the program. 44% uh, of those have uh, adhered to daily readings for their hypertension. Um, again, if you have any questions about our VRI program with for hypertension members, feel free to utilize the chat for any questions. And the Uber Eats pilot is an exciting program for, for expecting moms. We have partnered with Uber Eats and the Georgia Primary Care Association and three FQACs in, throughout the state. Uh, this program provides a member with a $150 gift card when they complete their prenatal visit and an additional $150 gift card when they complete their postpartum visit. This program is designed to improve access to food for members who are currently expecting. The members can reduce redeem their gift card in via the Uber Eats app so they can get delivery for food and also baby items or uh, different baby needs since there's some retailers included in the Uber Eats app. And lastly, we have our Maternal Hope 
program. HOPE um, stands for Helping Our Parents Be Empowered. This is a parental education program for our GA360 parents. It's for children ages zero to five, and the curriculum helps the parents learn about different approaches and teaches them parenting methods. This is specifically for our Georgia Family 360 members, and we will and we're excited to share more information. Uh, feel free to ask in the chat. Next, we would like to share some incentives that we have for our members. We know how important it is to make sure that they are up to date with their um, well checks and immunizations and returning to the doctor's offices. We have our healthy rewards program that promotes the visit to the to the doctor's offices and helps a member redeem gift cards when they go and complete a well check. You can see on the screen examples of these different wellness and the gift card that they are el eligible to redeem. Uh, we also have a lot of information for our healthy rewards on our website and we have specific flyers if, we, if you would like more information on those. Additionally to that, we have our value added benefits. Our VAVs, uh, what they stand for, are extra benefits that we offer. A lot of those are tied to a wellness visit or again, an immunization, because we wanna make sure members are up to date. We have our Amazon voucher for members 15 to 18, where they can buy different wellness items in Amazon once completing a well check. We also have our DoorDash gift card for the summertime for children who are completing their well checks again. We have our flu pandemic kit for ages 16 to 21, where they complete their flu shot. We have a, a lot of VAVs and we're excited to offer this for our members. It any questions about our value added benefits, we have flyers and information available on our website as well. Members can access uh, the VAVs through our website and redeem them, the request and redeem them there as well. Next, we have uh, some of our response for the post pandemic and telehealth. For telehealth, we will continue to follow uh, the state guidance for the te for telehealth access post pandemic, and we're also working on exciting enhancements that will improve telehealth opportunity for our members that will come in the near future. We continue our partnership with Georgia Partnership for Telehealth, and we're excited to provide this benefit to our members and providers. If you have any questions, again, feel free to utilize the chat. Uh, another new response that we have is a Sydney community app. This app is a brand new app that we launched two weeks ago. The Sydney Community app connects members to other folks in communities and also to local resources. Within the app, there are different communities that they can join, including diabetes, cancer, maternity, and parenting. They can connect with other members. They can talk about some resources and share experiences, and they can also find local resources based on their zip code. The Again, the Sydney Community app is live, and we have information on our website. And lastly, we have Concierge Care, which is a new comprehensive digital my, um, case management program. Uh, this is also delivered through a member facing app that syncs the member with the care management program. The, the app enables to, tr uh, to trigger the case manager if the member is in need and also has the option of engaging with the member. This is open to all members and we're excited that this program again is live. If you would like more information on Sydney or concierge care, feel free to ask in our chat. Next, we have a Ready, Set, Renew campaign, which is our effort to address Medicaid redetermination. As we know, Medicaid redeterminations started in April, and we are in the beginning of the process, and we are very excited to support our members uh, through the process. We have a dedicated team on our member services that when the members call asking for detailed questions about the process, they can help them and they can get transferred to this Medica Medicaid renewal team. We have done specific training through our, our associates and also in the community and how to support the member. We continue to focus on provider materials and communication. My team has specific provider materials that we can offer. And if you would like your practice to receive materials or receive um, information, please let me know in the chat or I can also add my email address and we can send over those flyers. We would love to partner and we welcome any collaboration with providers to make sure that you, you have the resources and tools that you need to help our members through the Medicaid redetermination process. 
we will continue to do community engagement and events, and you will see those on our social media, on our website. Those events will be uh, to help the member complete the process and give them the tools they need. We also have a Ready, Set, Renew campaign, which is very specific to our members. The campaign includes a personalized video to the member explaining how to complete the renewal process. We also have a landing page. We will have a phone call, a text, an email, and a follow-up email uh, directly to the member providing them the information they need. We have developed flyers and also social media campaigns. Uh, all of that is live at the moment and will continue through the entire Medicaid redetermination process. Next, to cover our provider engagement piece, I would like to pass it on to Vivian Scott, who will speak to you again on provider engagement. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Maria, for that um, introduction. Uh, again, my name is Vivian Scott. I am the Director of Provider Relationship Management for Mirror Group Georgia, and I am very pleased to be here today to speak to you about some of the activities and initiatives we have underway and some of the actions that we've taken around strengthening our network. Um, first, I want to talk about our psychological testing fast track. This is an alternative for our network providers to um, pursue obtaining prior authorization without having to go through the full process. Amerigroup partnered with the Georgia Psychological Association in creating an attestation process, and this allows up to six hours of psychological testing with no medical necessity review. Since we've implemented the fast track process, we have had an over 300% increase and the amount of psychological tests that have been ordered and received by our members. Um, this was certainly, you know, listening to our providers and working towards removing an administrative burden and to provide quicker access for our members to receive these tests. Another um, initiative or add um, to our providers is the addition of Hicks Picks Codes T2038. This is the community transition code. And Amera Group listened and heard our outpatient providers' frustration with not being able to bill for members who end up in a facility. So beginning 1-1 of 2023, all outpatient behavioral health providers are now able to build this code while assisting members in transitioning from an inpatient level of care to include psychiatric inpatient facilities, crisis stabilization units, and also psych psychiatric residential treatment facilities back into the community. We implemented this code because as we know, members are more likely to be engaged with an outpatient provider when introduced in the hospital prior to discharge. Another activity uh, that we have available and is there's additional inf information on our provider portal. I'm only going to speak on three of these today very, very briefly, but if you're looking for additional information, you can certainly go out to our provider portal on any of these items or contact your local provider representative and I'll give you more details around that um, shortly. Our category two incentives, um, although we have many of them, I want to focus on one that we have out there for diabetes, for behavioral health, and for asthma. And because of the amount of information and the coding specifics around these incentives, I'm not going to go into a lot of, I'm not going to go into any detail, but I am going to direct you to go out to our website and retrieve the uh, provider communications that we have there. And I'll give you that link later in the presentation or you can send us an email and your provider rep will provide that information to you within 24 hours. I am very, very pleased um, to announce that we're back in the community. Uh, uh, beginning on March 1st of this year, um, Amera Group launched uh, back into the community face-to-face -face engagements with our providers. Uh, many of you have probably already had a visit from your provider representative, but if you have not, and you have a need, 
please feel free to contact us on the contact us information that I will provide at the end of the presentation. You can send us a web email if you don't know who your provider representative is, or you can consult the resource list. If you send us an email, you will receive an acknowledgement and a response within 24 hours. I also want to um, call out in joining our network that Amerigroup is accepting all specialties currently into the network. We have no closed panels. We have a convenient digital process for providers that are um, either individual level practitioners or practitioners um, that are in new groups that are looking to join our network. It is the most convenient way. It provides for tracking and notifications. And this is called our digital provider enrollment. You can access digital provider enrollment through the Availity web portal. And this allows you to go out, complete your application. You will receive your provider contract via email. You can check the status of your application through this process. I do want to note that currently this feature is only available for new providers that are joining the network. If you are an individual level practitioner or a practitioner group, and this includes such specialties as PTOTST, and individual practitioner level behavioral health. If you do not meet the um, categories just previously mentioned and you are an ancillary provider such as an ambulatory surgery center or behavioral health core, IFE or other ancillary or facility provider, you would um, go to the Amerigroup website and go to the join us page and there is an application for those provider specialties where you can apply to join our network. You will then be contacted by a member of the contracting team to uh, begin that process. The link for joining our network again will be provided, but if you just want to write it down, you would simply go to um, the join our network page at the um, Georgia Provider Amerigroup website. You would select the Ability Web Portal. You would select Amerigroup from the Payer Spaces. Then you would select Applications and then Provider Enrollment. And again, this information and these detailed instructions are available on our Amerigroup Provider Web Portal. Next, I want to focus on Provider Incentives and at Amira Group, we have a number of incentive programs um, that we offer for providers who meet the um, criteria for these particular programs. First up is our Provider Quality Incentive Program, also known as PQIP. This is a PCP program that rewards our value providers for the quality care they provide to our Medicaid members. Using a system of HEDIS measures, PQIP seeks to encourage efficient, preventive, and cost-effective healthcare practices. These incentives are earned by targeted clinical quality results and the measurements of those results, and the practice of promoting safe and effective patient care across the healthcare delivery system. Medical cost management by providing incentives for improving quality care and tools and providers to reduce medically unnecessary utilization and cost. And then lastly, I want to touch on a component that is a little bit different from PQIP, which is our provider negotiated shared savings program. And this is also a PCP directed uh, incentive program where the groups um, are willing to assume a downside risk. If you are interested in more information on either of these programs, again, um, information can be obtained if you will contact your local provider representative. We'd be more than happy to share the program description and other information with you. Additionally, we offer our obstetrics quality incentive program or our OB QIP, and this offers incentives to our participating OB providers um, and allows for increasing access and improving the quality of care and outcomes for our maternity members throughout all phases of their pregnancy. Again, similarly to PQIP, these incentives are earned by improving their clinical quality indicators, maternity outcomes, and 
providing more mm -hmm. efficient management and appropriate utilization of benefits for these members. Next, um, I want to talk about our um, category two incentives. Oh, excuse me, I, I think I mentioned those a little bit just a few minutes ago. Uh, but I also want to talk about our behavioral health quality incentive programs, our BH QIP. Um, similarly, um, same types of focus on measurements for outcomes in, in almost all of these programs. But the BH quality incentive program offers incentives to eligible BH providers. This includes our community service boards and other outpatient community mental health providers and our large groups. And this is done by providing quality care and services to our members who have behavioral health needs. Additional behavioral health programs that are available is our ABA QIP for um, autism, um, our behavioral health emergency department incentive program, our BH quality incentive program, and then our BH facility incentive program. Again, we have additional information and program description information available on our website, or you may contact your local provider representative. We also have a focus on social drivers of health, and we have a provider incentive program around this that we call SODAPIP. This program offers incentive to providers to deliver quality and efficient care while keeping the healthcare needs of our members the primary focus. Incentives are earned by identifying members with um, SDOH and adverse childhood experience or ACE. Uh, members with SDOH and ACE needs by referring them to community-based organizations and of course, improving member health outcomes. Additional initiatives that are underway that are member targeted, but they are through partnerships with certain providers within our network are available for participation with certain providers in our network. Um, but I, I want to first touch on our um, emerging risk case management model. And for our behavioral health services area, we've grouped these services and define these as levels of care. Those level of care categories are inpatient, whether emergent or acute, uh, PRTF or psychiatric residential treatment facility services, um, our PHP partial hospitalization, our intensive outpatient um, program, and then other outpatient services um, that involve individual family group therapy, um, CSI, IFE, um, MAT, testing and assessments, and of course, IC3. We have another um, unique initiative um, through partnership with Peachford and Viewpoint, and we call this our pro pro priority access appointments. We launched this in September of 2022, and it's for all members discharging from Peachford Hospital. It ensures our members have greater access to step down services at the time of discharge without barriers and it helps to diminish long wait times. Access and assessment to IC3 and wraparound services to help high need members is included and to help transition them from one level of care to the next. We have an initiative with Hillside called the Intensive In-Home Project, and this is an evidence-based intensive DBT treatment program um, that we launched with Hillside in November of 2021. This is for high-risk members ages 8 through 24 and their families who may struggle with severe anxiety, acute social and or emotional needs and have difficulties making progress in traditional outpatient settings. Our suicide prevention and intervention model is a program that identifies members at risk of a suicidal event in the next 12 months and to prevent suicide attempts reduce emergency room and inpatient utilization, and to help improve positive health outcomes. The case management in this model uh, is provided to these members and is focused on safety planning, risk reduction, family support, connection to community resources, and after-hours support. 
Um, some additional programs um, that we have uh, that are incentive-based programs that we wanted to highlight for our behavioral health. I talked about the emerging uh, case risk model, but um, our BH FIT program I referenced a little bit earlier, very, very similar to the other programs, but it is focused on um, behavioral health facility specific measures. Um, this is um, the office incentives to those uh, particular health inpatient facilities, our inpatient outpatient psychiatric hospitals, freestanding mental health and substance use disorder facilities, and acute care hospitals with psych units. For more, more information, again, uh, please feel free to contact us and we'll be happy to give you details on the criteria and the program descriptions. And now I am going to uh, transition to Ms. Abby Bolden, who will give, give you some, some information. information around our community engagement committees. Abby. Thank, Thank you, you Vivian, Vivian, and okay. good morning, everyone. Here at Amerigroup, we believe that decisions should not be made about our providers, members, and community without the input of our providers, members, and community, and as such, have created opportunities to seek feedback and leverage the voices of those that we serve. Today, I wanna to share with you a few of the committees in which we elicit stakeholder feedback and utilize that feedback to inform our decision-making process. The first committee today that I wanted to speak on is the provider, excuse me, the Market Provider Advisory Committee, otherwise known as MPAC. Those who serve on MPAC work collaboratively with us here at Amerigroup to reimagine how we work with providers and their healthcare teams. We also operate the Behavioral Health Steering Committee, which includes various behavioral health providers, including therapists, psychiatrists, psychologists, and community service boards and core providers who provide feedback on our behavioral health policies and procedures. Since inception, the GF360 program has operated the GF360 Steering Committee, which is comprised of a diverse group of child welfare experts across the state to include anyone from juvenile court judges to behavioral and physical health providers to foster and adoptive parents. Georgia Families 360 program also monitors and manages the Youth Advisory Council, which creates an opportunity to seek input of young adults between the ages of 16 and 24 who have transitioned out of foster care and have been critical in using their voice to develop key initiatives and strategies to better serve youth who also have had a history in child welfare. Two other committees I want to speak on today is our Health Equity Council, which is a group of community leaders who provide advice and counsel on organizational strategy and community relations aimed to improve health equity for our members. And last, we have the Health Education Advisory Committee, which provides feedback on quality management initiatives, policies and procedures, and makes recommendations on how we can close disparity gaps. Next, I'm going to talk about innovations that we have underway that we're very excited about. We're committed to meeting our members and our providers where they are, and as a result, are excited to share some of these initiatives. The first one is related to our providers. Provider data load time is a top operational issue for Georgia providers. We understand that elongated load, load times can cause delays in which members can access care, providers can get paid, and also creates a lot of rework that may be unnecessary. Now, while the state requires CMOs to load provider data in 30 days, here at Amerigroup, we wanted to do better. In quarter three of 2022, Amerigroup invested in automating the state CVO provider data file or the 7400 file. We launched this automated solution in February of 2023, and on that day, we saw hundreds of newly credentialed providers updates load, not within weeks, but in under 24 hours. This is currently in the quality testing and monitoring phase. However, we anticipate daily automation to go live in May of 2023. Another provider innovation that we have is related to delegated roster automation. Also in 2022, we invested in cutting edge automation and artificial intelligence to fully automate the delegated provider roster loads. We launched this automated solution and testing is currently complete with a large Georgia provider who was able to achieve roster loads in as little as three hours. 
Phase one rollout to all Amerigroup delegated Georgia providers is currently underway, and we anticipate that Amerigroup provider reps will soon be outreaching to our provider network to discuss the implementation plan in detail. Now, we also have several key innovations that are specific to better serving our members and caregivers. One of which I want to share today is a partnership that we have with GOMO Health. Utilizing the GOMO Health platform, we've created an opportunity for caregivers to have direct ac access to two various pathways of support. The first pathway is providing resources to assist our caregivers of children zero to four in efforts to de detect autism early. We've had over 80,000 members enroll in this platform and are seeing an over 90% retention rate, which we're very proud of. The second pathway of this program is to provide resources for caregivers who are currently caring for a child with autism. Since launching this, we've had over 5,000 members enroll in the program. We've seen a 90% retention rate, and of the members enrolled, we've seen a 29% reduction in inpatient behavioral health utilization. Now, not only is this application tailored to best serve our members, but we also understand the well-being needs of caregivers who are serving this population. And so this platform creates opportunities for caregiver wellness checks and provides a live chat feature where our caregivers can directly connect with their Amerigroup Georgia Family 360 care coordinator. The final innovation I wanna to share today is related to step-down homes. Here at Amerigroup, we understand that when our young adults are transitioning from a long-term inpatient care facility back to the community, there can be many challenges with that reintegration back. As such, we partnered with Chris 180 and Murphy Harps to develop a step-down home model. This model utilizes a house parent model where our young adults who are leaving a long-term care can come to a designated step-down home where they'll have house parent support, but also intensive community support, which helps them learn the skills that they need to further transition back and integrate back to their community. What I shared today is just a very small portion of the exciting opportunities that we have underway here at Amerigroup. We hope that you all stay tuned to hear more from us on more enhancements, more innovations, some of which touch on telehealth that we know will impact and increase the availability of services for our members and for our providers. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Marcus Lennon, who's going to share with you all more about an impactful and exciting team that we have available, our education and training team. Marcus? Hey, thank you, Abby, for this information. Um, on behalf of the education and training team, I would like to share some of our efforts in the training space. So we approach um, education and training from a holistic approach, and we have incorporated some key concepts. Uh, one of our key concepts is the village, the community, wrap around services. This concept is integrated in our regional resource fairs where we bring various community partners, providers, stakeholders, and other service providers to the table where they are able to provide information about their agency and the services. These resource fairs are held regionally as outlined by DFAC's regional map areas 1 through 14. So essentially, these, these resources are local and have been a great avenue for the community to network and become more aware of who's around them, who's in their own backyard. Um, another concept we've adopted is staying connected, and we do this through the use of our surveys. At the conclusion of every training and or presentation, presentations, participants must complete a survey, and we use this feedback to implement future trainings, i.e. our special trainings and or targeted populations. Some of our training as a result have included um, ADD, asthma, financial literacy, healthy relationships, um, et cetera, and I can go on and on about the topics based off of those survey results. Um, another concept we have adopted is subject matter experts, and we believe, because here at Amerigroup, we believe our caregivers are the SME. They're the subject matter experts when it comes to fostering and parenting. So our Table Talk 360 series is all about our caregivers, where they have the ability to learn from each other. This is a safe space where they can relax, they can vent, they can network, they can learn, and they can soak up as much information as needed. This setting is like being in a coffee shop. So we always tell the parents or the caregivers, say, hey, grab your favorite cup of coffee and tea. 
and just have a indulging conversation with your best friends. And the last concept that I will kind of talk about for this presentation is lived experiences. I know Abby spoke earlier about what our youth advisory board has done, but there is no greater teacher than being able to no greater teacher than someone who has already walked the walk and talked the talk. And our Youth Advisory Council have done just that. These young people have been on fire. They've been empowering others and themselves. They have started nonprofits, become life coaches, and have been engaged in statewide activities regarding youth movements. We are so proud of them and their journey. So as we conclude this topic, hopefully you got a um a big screenshot or a small screenshot of what we have been doing in the training education side. And now I'll turn it over to Michelle. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you, Marcus. Um, wanted to address some of the questions that were sent through the um, chat function is not working, so I was going to post a few websites for you over there. We will send them out um, after the presentation as well, but one was how to apply to be a provider, and Vivian already went over that um, and told you how to maneuver the website. We'll be sending out the link to everyone, thank you, to everyone that had requested directly, and then overall we'll respond to the Medicaid fair questions. Um, the next one is how to set up a provider online. Again, Vivian talked briefly about availability and that function. So we will send you the link and the directions on how to um, get set up for that as well. We had the question um, around telehealth requirements. Would they be the same after the PHE ends? And Amerigroup will continue to follow DCH guidance on that. Um, what I can tell from the manual that was just updated in April, there are not um, if any, a lot of a lot of changes that I see that they will be going back to. Um, what is the credentialing process for Amerigroup? Again, we follow the process through the state. Um, all providers, unless you're delegated, must be credentialed through MMIS. We will also provide that link to you as well as the link to partner with us. So after your credentialing is complete, how to contract with Amerigroup. Another question was, where can I find who is my provider relations rep? All of that information is available on the website um, as well at the links that have been provided. Um, and I'll we'll send out the instructions on how to maneuver and get there directly. Um, another question, are there any upcoming changes that we need to be aware of for the authorization process? The state has informed us that um, the PHE will be lifted on May 11th at that time. Um, we will go back, I mean, at that time, it'll go back to pre-COVID. And then the, the rest of the questions that we received were very specific to the practices that we're asking. Um, and so you should be receiving, if you have not already received an email directly from your rep. And it looks like we have a question from Shay. I'm gonna try to get you off of mute. I can unmute her for you, Ms. Michelle, if you would like. Okay. Also, you have a question in the Q&A box. Would you like me to read it to you? Yes, please. I would like more information about the Sydney app and concierge care to give to our clients. Is this information available on the Amerigroup website? We can definitely send out some more information. There are There is information posted, but if we can get an email address, we will gladly send out additional information um, and would love for you to share it. Okay, perfect. I am unmuting Shay Minnick for you. Shay Minnick, you can now speak. Hi, Shay. Uh, is she, can we tell if she's unmuted? I have unmuted her. Um, I'm also going to allow the mic for Therese Baker, just in case Michelle. Okay, can you hear me now? Shay. Yes, hello. Yes, this, is, this is Shay. I'd like to just publicly thank all of you for the uh, automation of the provider upload. I'm the one that brought that issue up in the fall to an entire room of applause. So I just wanted to say thank you very much. That is much appreciated. Thank you. We appreciate that. <laughs> okay, Atrice Baker, you can now speak your question as well.
Patrice, can you unmute? If you're having difficulty of also okay. going ahead and unmute. Yes, oh, thank there you. you are. Perfect. Thank you. thank you so much for the presentation. Very informative. And can you please post the information again about the um, caregivers that you were just speaking of? In that last could presentation. We, could we go over it or, or send you additional information? Oh, just send me a different information it would be great. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, Amy Molina, you are now unmuted and you can now go ahead and ask your question as well. Hi, good morning. Um, I do have a question regarding the psych testing fast track. So um, I have understood that we'll be able to get up to six hours, no medical necessity needed. So does that mean we do not need to have an authorization in place? Hey, Michelle, I can speak to that. Um, so the fast track process actually still issues an approval. Um, once you complete the attestation and um, attach any supporting documents needed for your attestation, it is go it goes through a process and you will receive um, the approval. Okay, and so I, I'm just a little confused on like what the difference is from the process we had to what fast track means it's it's not the level of information that you have to provide during the full prior authorization process and if you would like um if you can put your email in the chat we'll be more than happy to um, get you the level of detail and and yes. get you information that shows you the distinction between the two processes Okay, perfect. Um, I'm I can't put in my email in the chat. It says it's okay. Turned. Well, I will put my email in the chat, and you okay. can reach me direct and <laughs> um, and request that information. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And Vivian, I'm not able to type in the chat at all. I don't know if you can, because I was going to post these links, so we might have to follow up. Um, there is a board where Someone's asking questions, right? Correct, Michelle. Like, and I have another one ready for you. Okay. I'd like me to read it to you. Well, is there a place that um, people online, like where she can put her email in there? Yes. If they click on the Q&A box at the top of their screen there, they will be able to, it says start discussion. If they type in that box, they'll be able to drop their email or any other information that they need to. Perfect. So, okay, if you so could we do have that, a please. We have a question from Kelly Ball. Are you ready for it? Yes. Okay. I am at a pediatric office and had a question. Did the well check frequency guidelines change for children 12 years of age and older? We have been getting denials saying that the patient must wait 365 days for the previous well check. When we reached out to our provider rep two months ago, I was told that they would get back with me and I've yet to have any updated information. When the claim was appealed, it was still denied. I also have not, have not found any changes reported in the EPSDT manual nor in the American Provider Manual. Can you please advise? We're going to need to get the email information to follow back up with her because we need to specifically look at the claims. Okay, Kelly, if you can drop your email there for us, we'll get back to you, okay? And I'm seeing no more questions um, in the box here for now, Michelle. We do have one raised hand from Justin. I'm gonna unmute him. Okay. Okay, Justin, you can now speak. Hey, I just had a question about service dates for prior authorizations. Um, I'm in the behavioral health. We've experienced some denials that appear to be retroactively changed service dates with no notification. Are you aware of any reason off the top why that could be happening or what the explanation may be? Or is it possibly a, a thing with GAMIS? I'll open that up to the UM team. Behavioral health.
we can take your contact information and, and get back with you on that. Um, doesn't look like anyone is on that can address that specifically. Can you please put your information in the um, Q&A side? Um, I'm I'm in the meeting on Teams and uh, chat's disabled, so I, I cannot do that at the moment. Go, I, it was it was for me too, but go under Q and A at the top instead of the chat function, and oh, I think I'm you so, can I'm sorry. in there. I see what you mean. I'm sorry. Oh no, I, I was doing the same thing. Don't apologize. <laughs> so if you can put it in there in your email, and we'll have someone follow back up with you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any more? Not to my knowledge. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to raise your hand and I will unmute you. Um, if not, then I think that's all of them. Okay, we got a new post here. Okay, well, that's, that's Justin dropping his email address. Thank you so much, Justin. All right, we have a hit raised hand from Leanne. Leanne, you can now go ahead and, uh, and speak on your mic. Can you hear me? Yes. I have a um, question about hearing screenings for authorizations. How often do um, do my patients need to get an updated hearing screening? Is it once a year, every two years for speech therapy? Jackie Tedesco, are you on? If if you see Jackie Tedesco, can you open her up to be able to? Respond to that question. Please. Hey, Michelle, I think only of only those of us that are registered as presenters can speak. Um, so unfortunately, we're going to have to take these back um, so that we can get a response. Can we not open it up and we can open it up for them to ask questions? I was thinking we could open it up for her to. We, we don't see her. Oh, so okay. Some, okay, of, some of them are listed only as numbers and not names. Gotcha. So we will we will take that question and follow back up with you. Okay. And we certainly we certainly apologize that um, some of our leaders that are on the call aren't able to be able to respond, but we will definitely get these responses back as soon as possible. Okay, I was just wondering because some, some doctor's office um, they um, do not perform hearing screenings every well check, so that's why I was just wondering. And we'll, we'll get clarification for sure. Right. Can you put your email, please, in the Q&A section? OK, I'll see if I can. Can I ask you one more question? Absolutely. If sometimes it takes with one source, I can request an authorization. They'll give me 30 days without a signed plan of care to give me time to get it. Sometimes it takes the doctor. It'll be signed 30 days after the date of the therapist's signature. Is that OK or is that a, a red flag? I just wondered, like. What I need to do about that? Do I need to call the doctor and tell them to backdate it after they send it to me? And we'll get we'll follow up with you on that okay. as well. Okay. I want to make sure that I'm giving you the appropriate information. Okay, thank you. I don't I don't want to guess. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> okay, we have one more raised hand. So Ralph O'Connor, you can now go ahead and ask your question. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. OK, so uh, we're a very small clinic and we've noticed that several of our patients who think they have a Mara group, but when we check the eligibility in Gamus, it says that it's been expired in the last year. Is there? I mean, we've I think we have over a dozen patients just with a Mara group that that's happened to and it seems like there may be a glitch in the system somewhere. And can you provide um, specific we would need if you will take that offline and you can provide specific examples to us because during the PHE no one was losing eligibility. That's what I thought. Yeah, but yes, we've got, not just y'all it's Peach State is also we've had the same kind of problem. None, none from fee for service. These are all CMO patients. So I think we need to look at those on an individual who, basis who and I figure out what's going on. Who should I send that to? Um, if if you put your email address in the Q and A, we can um, reach out to you. We'll have the appropriate person. Yeah, I am on my phone and I don't think I have access to the Q and A function. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. What? What was your name? 
Spider. Um, Ralph O'Connor. I'll, I'll go. To, I'll go and to your website and. Michelle, to. can we? Michelle, can I ask Ralph what county are you in? Fulton County. Okay, great. Um, I'm gonna give you. I'm just gonna call out my email. Do you? Can you write it down? Okay. It's it's Vivian V I V I A N dot Scott S C O T T at Amerigroup dot com. And Vivi, I I have his email as well on the registration. Okay. I just checked it. So wonderful. Yeah. Okay. And, and then one one other clarification. Did you say that you're seeing this across all the CMOs when you're looking at eligibility on gammas? Not all. I think more from Amerigroup and Peach State. We only have a couple from CareSource. We have none from Fever Service. That's why I'm wondering if there's a glitch somewhere. Okay, great. Thank you. And and Michelle, Jackie has joined us and she just put some information, I think, in the Q&A. Perfect. And if we could go back to, if you could please raise your hand um, who had the question for Jackie and make sure that we get that fully addressed. Okay, we actually have um, two additional people. Would you, are you ready for those next people? Yes. Okay, next I have Patty. Patty, you should now be able to unmute. Hi, Patty. Patty, you there? Can you unmute for us? Okay, there you Did are. I, okay, good. Yeah. I wanted to ask a few questions. One is on the questions that are being asked that are not just patient specific, is there a way that um, these responses could be put out in a public way? Like I had interest in knowing the answers to a few of those, like uh, the one that you're going to have Jackie respond to that one and some other ones. So they will all be, they'll all be posted. Uh, we'll respond in a spreadsheet and send them back to DCH and they'll post all of the questions on their website. I believe they said that they would have it out there by um, May 1st. Okay. And um, I think that probably what the lady was asking, the reason about sometimes there's a delay in getting a doctor to sign um, that if we could go to a specialist who actually did the referral to us, wanted to know about the possibilities of having a specialist, an ENT doctor, provide the signatures on the forms and the referrals rather than going back to the PCP. Is that something that can be is acceptable or not in the past we've been told an ENT can cover for three months but then we have to get back to the PCP but it is sometimes a challenge to get a PCP to respond timely so that we don't have to pause therapy or not get cut get paid for it Jackie are you able to unmute We have found her and we have um, unmuted her, so she should be able to speak to us. Okay, thank you. Hi, hi, it's Jackie. Thank you, Jackie. Not a problem. Can you all hear me? Yep. Okay, so Patty, in answer to your question on the plan of care, the CIS manual still requires a PCP sign that. We can, for problematic um, physicians who are not signing them in time, you know that you can always ask for the 30 days. If you still don't have it within the 30 days, um, we can give you the additional month at a time, um, you know, for the three months. So I remember those days when it was going to the, the three months. Um, we can go ahead and do the three months um, for those that you have issues with the, uh, the PCP signing it. Um, until that changes in the CIS manual, we'd still need the PCP to sign it, but we can definitely go out to three months for you. Um, if you think you'll have it within a month or so, ask for the, the authorization for 30 days, put your unsigned care plan in there as well as the rest of the required documentation. And then as long as the medical necessity is met, we can definitely give you that month without the signed care plan. Um, so, and again, we can go to the three months for the problematic um, providers who, who take a lot, a lot longer than that. 
Um, Leanne, I know that you had asked that question as well um, regarding the plans of care. Please don't have the physician backdate anything. Um, that would definitely be a red flag. Um, just go ahead and ask for the 30 days. Same same thing. Ask for the 30 days. Um, you know, if the physician signs that care plan and it's more than 45 days from the date of your eval, um, then we would go from um, the date of your eval to six months. If it's between, you know, one day and 44 days um, from the signature of that physician, then we'll go out till six months from your re-eval or eval. Um, so please don't have them backdate anything because that would be a red flag, but we will still honor it for six months of therapy depending on when he signs it. So if, again, if he signs it after 45 days, we'll go from six months from your eval or re-eval. And if he signs it before then, we'll go out the six months or your care plan date range. And can I also ask another follow-up question about sure. when there's two types of services that are needed under CPT code 92507 for speech therapy. Sometimes it's what we do with um, the speech therapy with for hearing loss, or sometimes a child will need um, swallowing or other kinds of services that a speech language pathologist will do. But if one authorization is out there, in the past we have not been able to get a second authorization, like if our provider wants to continue doing therapy, but the child needs swallowing therapy. We have not been able, the other provider could not get an authorization if we had one or vice versa. Okay, so in answer to that question, specifically to swallowing and feeding, those are two different CPT codes. And again, based on medical necessity, we can do that. Um, if it is the same code, it would be considered duplicative therapy and per federal and state regulations, we can't approve for duplicate therapy. Whereas on the clinical side, again, if it's, it's if it's a child that you're seeing for the hearing, the cochlear implant kids for hearing and speech production, and then you have a kid who also has swallowing deficits or feeding deficits, that's two se separate codes. So you should be able to get that without a problem. Again, it's always going to be based on medical necessity. But our understanding in the past is swallowing does fall under 92507, as well as articulation issues. Yes, articulation does, swallowing does not. Swallowing and feeding is 92526. Okay, and and so, um, and Patty, if you have additional questions, certainly um, get those to us and we'll be happy to um, get additional response or connect you and Jackie um, together. Unfortunately, we are past our time for the presentation. Uh, we would certainly like to thank everyone for your time, your attention, your participation, and the questions. Um, if you have additional questions, um, just put those in the Q&A as we requested, and we will uh, make sure that you get a response, and then we will ensure that these are all posted um, with the questions and the responses um, on the DCH website. On behalf of Mel Lindsay and the entire Mirror Group leadership team, we'd like to thank you for your participation today, and we wish everyone a great rest of your day and the rest of your week. Goodbye.